So in the second session today, let me give an introduction to the Scala language. So in order to start the question, you should know about a little bit of the language itself. So we start programming Scala. So I demonstrated you how to get the Scala prompt and I demonstrated how to set up a Docker image with Scala. So when you start the Scala, you may get a Scala prompt. There you can type whatever the instructions you want and then Scala re replies to the replies to it. So for example, when you say one plus that one, they add these two together and give you the results. This is two. Also, I have given you some questions or the problems to be solved. So I solved, I, I demonstrated how to solve these problems as well in the last lecture, last video. So if you, if, let's have a look back again to those solutions. So for example, in the first one, we want to convert centigrade into the Faraday. So there is a direct equation which do that. So centigrade multiplied by centigrade value multiplied multiply by 1.8 and at 32 will and do the conversion. So if you want to do it directly like 35 centigrade into the Fahrenheit, you can type it at the bottom like here. You can say 35 multiplied 1.8 plus 32. And then Scala will tell you the result. But in case if you want to convert a different value of the centigrade, let's say 40, and you need to type this again. So typing the same thing again and again, it's not convenient. So instead of doing that, we can implement a function for that. And then we can directly call that function. I demonstrated it in the last video. Similarly, when you take the problem of calculating the volume of the spare with radius r, there is an equation for that. So we can directly call that equation. We can assign some values and then use those values by coding as well. So for example, in the Scala prompt, I define a value called r. This is radius, is three. And then in the prompt I say four divide three multiply. This is this is fine. In Scala there is a library called math. It has the value called five. So it gives the value for five. So you can access that using math dot five and then multiply are three times are defined here and it gets the answer. So similarly, you can implement a function for that. So you may see something called value here. So you also feel familiar with the variables in some programming languages. So in, in Scala, if you want to create a constant, so we use the keyword value. So if you want to take some other libraries, we type that dot and the attribute we want to access. So for example, if you want to see what are the methods and attributes or the functions and attributes in the math class, so at the Scala prompt, you say math and put a dot and press a tab character. It tells you the description or the elements under math. So you can use those. Like there are functions like cos, sine and so on. There are constants like pi available in math class. So you can use them directly by typing math dot and the relevant name. So in programming, a literal is the data that appears directly in the source code. So number like three or character like A or the string like I one can be directly appear on the test. 
so when you create assign those literal to a we, we can assign those literal to a value or maybe variable value is an immutable storage immutable means no one can change after it defined and variable is the mutable storage so then so during the program we can change that so let me explain the difference between value and variable again so you know we can consider variable as a basket we can put any we can put any data fit into that basket in our code so that is kind of variable so if it is a value so we can't change after it defined so for example we can have a value name r it is radius and three and after that this value of r is fixed we can use it in our program we cannot assign something else to the r so syntax of defining a value something like that we say well and the name of that value that is called identifier and then we put colon and then type of this value and put an equal sign and type the literal initial one or the the one data which is going to be assigned into this value so for example in the prompt or in the program we can say well x colon it is an integer and assign phi to it so then scala will create a value called x with the with phi in, after creating that so we cannot reassign the data to it so for example if you try to assign four to the x then it returns error because we define x as a value variable is some kind of like empty box we can have we can put any data to it as i mentioned so then definition is something look like that syntax is something look like that variable definition syntax so it starts with the keyword called var, var variable and we can put identifier that is name and colon type of the variable and this assignment sign and the data so then it assigns this initial value to this particular variable so for example we can create a variable y type is double decimal number and assign 6.0 to that so then we create a variable called y y with initial data stored in it 6.0 so later on if you want to change that value 6 we can reassign this some other data to the variable So I think you can understand now the difference between variables and values. Values are constant in some other words. Variables are the places where we can change or we can store some different, different data. The data stored in values and variables in Scala will get automatically deallocated when they are no longer used. So that means Scala do garbage collection. So if, when you create a value or variable, we have to name it. So there are the methods of naming those. So the names of these variable or values are arbitrary long, but if you use very long names for that, it is not convenient. So usually we have to use some meaningful names. So otherwise, so we lost the readability of the program. 
when you name in those uh, values and variables so usually we start with the letter so we can follow by one or more letters or the digits sometimes we start with the underscore character as well so basically we start a value or variable name with a letter and we usually use meaningful name while creating variables or the values after we create uh, give the name we need to give the type so there are several predefined types available so you already we i already introduced few of them like integer and double integer for kind of real numbers negative and positive and the double we use for decimal numbers in addition to these fundamental types there are several types fundamental types available to define those variables and values so based on the type the scala reserve different size in the memory to store those and due to this size restriction we have a minimum and the maximum data which can be stored on those places so for example there is a type called byte it can store sign integers size is one byte minimum value is minus 127 maximum is 128 similarly there is a type called short it's also sign integer but use two bytes because of that we can store the numbers from minus 32768 to plus 32767 so integer is the common type we use in our programs scala use four bytes to store with those integers so then the range is from minus 2 to the power 31 to the plus 2 to the power 31 minus 1 so we can have another type called long so there the size is double like 8 bytes so then storage range is also double so if you have large number to be stored so then we need to use long so in order to store decimal numbers there are two types available called float and double if you use float the size is 4 bytes and if you use double we can use 8 bytes so if we need more precisions while storing the decimal numbers better to use double in addition to these numerical data types there are some other data types predefined data types available in the scala language they are called name any value any reference nothing null clear boolean string and unit so you may heavily see string units and boolean so but sometimes we need those other types as well while we move on you may understand what are they and how we use them so all the types in scala start with any type which is the root of all the types in scala any value is the root of all the value types in scala like that So when you are building programs any program like imperative or functional or declarative program so the basic the next basic element is expressions so we have variable or the constant that mean variable or the values and we can combine them together with what we call it as operators so we can see that different types of operators mathematical logical and so on. so when you combine variables values together with the operators we create a expression expression provide a foundation for functional programming because 
expression make it possible to return the data instead of modifying the existing data so for example if you build the expression like that it always has a final answer return value so for example in our previous problem in, when you want to calculate the volume of spare so we can build the expression for that so entire point of building expression is to return the value so that value can be captured and save it in a variable or that value can assign to the function and then function it returns to the other other programs or other functions so for example here this is some kind of expressions which calculates the volume of the spare by given the radius r sometimes when you want to uh, assign the expression to a function especially or expression to a value or expression to a variable we can we could have multiple expression blocks in other words if you have a long type of calculation we can divide it into the small steps and combine them together and create an expression block so, so expression block is marked with curly brackets so if you have expression block the last expression in that block is the final return value so for example i can create a value called amount and create an expression block and assign the result of this expression block to the value called amount so this expression block has two expressions one is there is a value called x phi multiplied 20 is assigned to this x after that we add x to 10 to the x so this expression blocks actually returns the value of this last expression that is x plus 10 so value of x is then 100 x plus 10 is 110 so it returns 110 110 is assigned to the value called amount so that's how expression blocks block works expression that contains variables are rules that describes how to compute numbers when we are given values of the variables a program is a such of four sets so the large program consists of many such small programs and the basic building block of the, any program functional law other is the value variable and expressions so when you do programming functional law any other there is other kind of special kind of expressions available we call it as conditional statement or conditional expressions conditional expressions or the statements returns only two values so we call them as true or false we build the conditional statement or conditional expressions by using conditional operators or we call it accelerational operators so by using some keyword called if and else we can control the execution of expression in the program using these conditional expressions so how it works something look like here syntax is so we have if keyword and we can give an expression logical expression or we call it as boolean expression 
And if that gets success, we say we need to execute this expression. So similarly, there is a other syntax called if else, you know about it, I guess. So we have if and then Boolean expression. That true, this part will execute. And there is a second part of it, start with else. After that, we have expression. If this is false, else part executes. So Boolean expressions always return two values. They are two, two and false. Assume we have defined two values called 10 and 20 and label them as x and y. So x has 10 and y has 20. So when you want to get maximum out of these two values, we can build a logical or this Boolean ex expression. So what we want is create a value called maximum. So we should get maximum value out of x and y to this. So if you want to do so, we can use if keyword and else keyword together with expression, logical or the Boolean expression. Our Boolean expression here is x greater than y. So if that is true, x is written. If that is false, y is written. So that means in case of x greater than y, x is assigned to this, that is actually maximum. This is false, then y should be maximum. So then y is assigned to the max. So by using this simple Boolean expression together with f as, we can get the maximum value out of x and y variable. Boolean expression or the logical expressions, as I said, only returns true or false. So a person called George Boolean introduced those Boolean expressions long time ago, computer science starts. So we can build Boolean expressions using what we call it as Boolean operators or the logical operators. So programming languages support different operators, logical or the Boolean operators. So Scala do the same. So if you want to check the equality, the operator we use is two equal signs. So for example, let's say we have a variable called x call 10 and variable y, y call 9. If you execute x to equal sign y, that means we will build, a, we will check whether x equal to y. So in this example, it is not. So that expression returns false. So here we have y call 10, 10, and our x is also 10. We reassign value 10 to y. So then here, since both x and y are same, so this expression returns true. We use relational operators or kind of like relational operators or logical operators, we call them sometimes different books use different names. For the operators which we use to build expressions, logical expressions or the Boolean expressions. So we are already familiar with those because most of the lang programming languages use this common set. So this is greater than, and this is greater than or less than equal. And this is check equality, this is not equal. So we, we can apply those operators, we call it as relational operators, to a two values or variables. As a result, it returns a Boolean value. As I said, two equals I check whether two operands are equal or not. 
and this explanation mark and equal checks whether these two given operators are not equal. This is check whether the first operand is greater than the second. This is checks first operand is less than the second. This is check whether the first operand is greater than or equal to the second. This checks first operand is less than or equal to the second. Sometimes we are using some kind of operation, operators called logical operators, together with those relational operators. Logical operators used to combine more than one logical expressions. So assume there is a logical expression here which returns a Boolean value and we can combine it with another logical expression which returns a Boolean value. And as a result of this combination, using the logical operators, it's created another Boolean value. In most of the programming languages, as such Scala as well, so we have different logical operators. So call it as not and O and XO. So these are the logical operators, but in Scala, let's see, most of the programming languages use those. Let's see what Scala has. So Scala mainly use three, three of them. So if two ampersand signs represent logical and. So because of that, if A and B assume the logical expressions, if we connect A and B both together with N, if get true, only in the case A and B both are true. So if you combine that with O operator, if any of these A and B true, so the final is will get true. So if you combine with not, it is opposite. So for, for example, if you put not in front of any logical expressions or Boolean expression, it returns the reverse. In order to understand that, assume we have this type. So four greater than three and 10 less than or equal 100. So in, this is one logical expression. It tells four greater than three, that is true. And this side tells 10 less than or equal 10. So this is also true. So we combine these two, two operators with uh, and, and operator. We combine it with and operator. So since both of these are two, true, so final results of that is true. So when you combine this with, so this part, you understand, four less than three is false. This part also false. So if you combine both together, so final result should be false because both parts are false. So when you take this, two equal to three, that is actually false. So when you put not operator in front, that is a reverse of that, then final result will be true. So take less more examples. So let's say we have two variable called x and y. Value of x is five, value of y is 10. So when you combine x minus five less than five, less than or equal zero, or x equal y, then what happens? So if you take this, x is five, five minus five is zero, so it is less than or equal zero is true. So this part is obviously false, but if since we combine these two together with O, final output with this logical or Boolean expression is true. So similarly, when you take this, x less than y, is true, 
on this other part, y greater than 100 is false. So since we combine it with n, so, and this part is false, final result of this Boolean expression is false. So when you take this, it says x multiply x, that is 25, and it say y plus 15 is also 25. So when you come check whether these two parts are equal, this is yes, it's equal, so this part get true. And when you take this y less than 100 years, that is also true. So when you combine this true, true Boolean expression with n, final result is true. Similarly, we can evaluate different logical expressions and, and can understand what could be the final results. So for example, in this case, as I said, four greater than three and 10 less than or equal 100. So both combined with n, both are true, so result is true. So when you take this, four less than three is false, this is also false, so final result is false. As I mentioned previously, this is false, but we take the reverse of it because of that final result is true. So when you take this and combine it, so final result is true. So when you take this final result false, and this is true. So you see, and I hope you understand how this logical, relational operators works, and as a result, how this Boolean expressions works. So now look at, how do you print some data onto the table? So, so far in the initial lecture, I use a command called print. So Scala has some other interesting command called printf, print for metadata string. That's it called as printf. If you want to print for metadata string, basically in this function, we have to give two parts. First part is the for metadata string, other parts it's the values we want to format. The second part is optional if you don't have any values or the variables. So in the formatted string build using some formatted characters, so usually Scala use those four. Percentage sign X used to represent strings. Percentage sign B represent for booleans. This is for integers and this is for floating point numbers. So when you sl use slash p, it's used for black slash. So usually use slash and this is new line. And then arrange return tab and so and so. As an example, if you want to print hello, so we say printf and put a string formatted part and then give this hello, it just print hello on the terminal. So when you give a string operator, we can tell here how many space we need. So when you take 10 S, so it print like that. So when you say minus S, it's aligned to the other side and print like that. Similarly, we can use D operator and then kind of I operator and F operator like that to have printed formatted string. In Scala, if we want to read something, so there are several commands available. Reading some data from the terminal, we use those functions called read line. Read line with prompt, we can prompt the message and read some data. And read it will read the integers. Read double will use a decimal number. Read boolean will read true or false. And read character will read a character at a time. So those functions defined in the package, call it as Scala IO STDIN. So if someone want to use this, we have to store, import this package first. Similar like Java, so we use import command. If you use programming language like C, it's called it as include and give a library we want to include. 
So in the Java and Scala, we use a keyword called import and tells import and the library we want to import. So here we want to import the read line command from standard input library. So after that, so we create the Scala application by extending the app. The application name or the object name is read name. So there we print this on the terminal and then use read line function to read the line and assign the return value of that to the variable called name. So then using printf, we put two strings. This is our format and string. And these are the two variables pass us to this printf function. So i1 will replace here and name value in the name variable will replace here. Then we might see i1 and our name. So when you want to use names or the letters in Scala, so there is a type called string type, if predefined data type in Scala. Like numeric types, so string type, we could also use some operators. So for example, we can use two equal sign to check the equality. So whether to check whether if the two strings are equal. So for example, let's say there are two string type called S1 and S2 defined here. And if you want to check whether two are equal, we can use two equal signs. So S1 or S2, if these two are equal, so that will return true then. So here you see I'm creating a value called S1. It has I1 plus cousin. So plus operator applies to the string then what happens if these two string get concatenated? So when you add plus operator to the two integers or two decimal numbers, then what happens? They add these two values together. So the same plus operator works on the string and may, the meaning of that is concatenation. Similarly, we can apply multiplication operator to the string as well. So when you apply multiplication operator to the number, so that number will multiply by this operand. So, but when you apply multiplication operator to the string, so that meaning of that is adding this word five times or printing that five times. So like that, some operators like plus multiplication is valid for string types as well. If you want to see what are the methods available on this string type, similar to the math class, we can type a string object like S1 and put a dot and press a tab character. So then it lists down all the methods available in this string object. So string object has methods like uppercase, to uppercase, length, contains, and so on. So for example, to uppercase converts all the given string S1 to the uppercase letters. So the length will return the length of a particular string. Then contains will check whether this word can exist in this given string. So like that, there are so many other methods available in the string data type where we can directly use them. So when you want to write programs, so we always need to improve the readability of the program. Because of that, sometimes we have to express in natural language what we do in these expressions or the functions and so on. So in order to express that, we use comments. Scala comments start with two slash, black slash, or sorry, slash characters. So usually those comments line will not taken by the compiler. The compiler skip those lines while compiling the programs. When you write any program, it doesn't matter declarative, imperative, functional, object-oriented. So it's a good practice to put comments 
in between your thoughts. So when those comments, as I mentioned, improve the readability of our programs. So with that, I have given very basic introduction to the Scala programming language because I'm going to use Scala for teach you the function and program. So in next session on words, I will discuss functional programming in detail. So I use Scala to do so. So you already know features and the syntax of few Scala's basic syntax. So let's use those syntax and use Scala to learn or functional programming from next session onwards. Thank you for listening.